What's going on everybody? Welcome to The Shift on YouTube. It's Francisco Rojas. First things first, go make sure you check out the latest episode of our podcast, me and Nick Earnshaw. Last week we talked about Wander Franco's ball flip, ball flip, and we're going to get into those rays today. Today we're definitely getting into those tip <laughs> unbelievable Tampa Bay rays. It makes no sense. Talk about the Tampa Bay rays. Uh, all-time Oakland Athletics lineup. We're going to go through, uh, you know, more franchises as the weeks and months and whatever goes on. So make sure you tune into our last episode. Link to that will be in the description box. But for today, what I have for you guys, just a couple of things to start your week off and things to uh, look forward to later uh, this week. So I'm going to give you guys one storyline to watch going to give you guys one pitching matchup to watch uh, and one thing to know. Uh, so three things there. Again, storyline, pitching matchup, and one thing to know um, just to kind of get your week started and things to look forward to again in the the, com in the, you know, the coming days uh, later this week. So first thing, storyline to watch. The Tampa Bay Rays. Again, I, I said I was going to mention the Tampa Bay Rays. I'm mentioning them right now. I mean, how can we not talk about them straight out of the gate? It's been unbelievable. Big win yesterday against the New York Yankees. They are now 28-7. and seven. It doesn't make any sense. 28-7. and seven. First in OPS. This is their rankings. First in OPS. First in ERA starting pitching. Not a huge surprise there. Um, third in relief pitching ERA. Again, not a huge surprise, but the offense... It doesn't make any sense. The offense makes zero sense. First in OPS. I'm not disrespect, trying to disrespect anybody on their offense, but we can all agree out there. Like, I'm not, uh, you know, I don't think anyone's going to take it personal out there. Like, no one expected this from the Tampa Bay Rays. Again, first in OPS. Uh, just their offense has been, I, I don't get it. I don't get it. First in OPS, again. Um, I mean, Yandy Diaz is playing like an MVP. Wander Franco is playing like Wander Franco. Like, we like we expected uh uh, Wander Franco would eventually be, so long as he can stay healthy, knock on wood. Um, and Isaiah Paradis with the with the big hit yesterday uh, to walk it off in the 10th. It just makes no sense. It doesn't make any sense. I don't get it. But here they are, just top three in every single ranking. It's unbelievable. Um, and they have the Baltimore Orioles, three-game set. That's a big series this week, man, big series. Orioles are 22-12. and 12. They're first place in any other division besides the AL East. The AL East is just that stacked. And then... To finish it off, just how they how they uh, played the Yankees this past weekend, they're at the Yankees. It was in Tampa Bay this past week, uh, this past weekend, and now it's at the Yankees for a four game set uh, later this week. It's gonna, it's exciting. I mean, the, the Rays are must see baseball right now. The Rays are must see. Obviously, that's the biggest storyline to watch for me. Tampa Bay Rays pitching matchup to watch this week. Justin Verlander and Hunter Green. And I like these type of matchups just because I like to see, especially someone like Verlander, who is probably the best pitcher behind in his generation behind Clayton Kershaw. I think there's no debate there. I mean, maybe there's some people that feel Verlander is uh, number one over Kershaw, but at the end of the day, uh, you know, Verlander is a generational pitcher. He's generational. Um, yes, he's what, 39, 40 years old, 38 to 40, somewhere in there. Um, and he'll be coming off of his second start, uh, where he had uh, five innings, uh, two, was it two earned, five hits, uh, five Ks, and one walk. Wasn't, um, wasn't. I mean, I, I guess if you're a Mets fan, like that's what you're, that's what you're looking for out of Justin Verlander, just to, you know, just to, as, you know, coming off the injury and it, it being his first start in a Mets uniform. I don't think you can really complain. He had the two home runs he gave up, but um, Verlander second start. I'm going up against Hunter Green, and this is this is what I like again. The the, the old you know Verlander being a generational pitcher, being 30, 38 to forty years old against Hunter Green, someone who's young, supposed to be a really good prospect, um, and yeah, and, and he's coming off his bad outing against the White Sox, five and two thirds, uh, seven hits, five earned, a couple of homers given up, one walk, and seven strikeouts. Like we know the strikeouts are going to be there. I mean, obviously Hunter Green's somebody to watch. Um, if you're a baseball fan, if you're a Reds fan, and if you're a baseball fan, Hunter Green is somebody to watch. So, I, I always like watching the uh, the old guard. I guess the old guard, whatever. Like the you know someone like Verlander in his position, where he's you know 
39 years old, whatever it is. I'm um, going up against Hunter Green. Um, I always like to see those matchups. Those those matchups are always exciting to me. And I'm always curious of how those pitchers uh, go into those matchups, um, what their mindset is, if they really care about that, saying, like, oh, I'm going up against you know, Verlander, even though he's going up against the, the Mets offense, but it's Verlander and Green. Like, I wonder how these, if those guys get any more motivated, uh, you know, by by these matchups. So Hunter Green, Justin Verlander, that's definitely my matchup to watch. There are other pitching matchups to watch this week, but this is on Wednesday, I believe. This is on Wednesday. Um, the Cincinnati Reds and New York Mets, uh, Verlander versus Hunter Green. Um, and then the last thing, and, and uh, you know, I would have started this show, or show, this video saying, you know, rest in peace to Vida Blue, who, you know, uh, just passed away at the age of 73, unfortunately, um, yesterday. Um, I would have started the show saying that, but I, you know, I wanted to, that this is my one thing to know for you guys, because I think it's, you know, important to, you know, remember the legends, remember the greats. It's good to remember, you know, uh, anybody that played the game, but especially somebody like Vida Blue, um, who we can do the whole Hall of Fame debate. Like, uh, you know, right now, I just want to talk about, let's leave the debate aside. Let's just talk about his greatness. Like, uh, I want to start off with a tweet I just read before before I started this video. Shout out to Greg Harvey, Harvey for this stat. Um, the only player in MLB history to have an MVP, Cy Young, three World Series titles, and 200 plus wins. It's Vida Blue. That's it. That's pretty incredible. That's pretty incredible thing to do, to have, uh, to do all those things. I mean, to have... That be this is what we love about baseball is statistic like those. Uh, Vida Blue legend uh, was on some of those uh, Oakland Athletics teams. Uh, you know, great Oakland Athletics teams, and he was a part of that three peat from uh, 1972 to 74. Um, so a part of some great, great, great franchises and teams. Um, he tossed a no hitter in, in his. I'm just gonna just kind of you know give you little tidbits and uh, little nuggets here. Tossed a no hitter in his. Eighth MLB start. <laughs> it's pretty incredible. That was that was the year before. Uh, I guess that was the year before he he went and won MVP and Cy Young in the same season, which is what he did in nineteen uh, seventy. Was it seventy one? I believe because yeah, seventy he threw the 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 no hitter. So seventy one the next year has like a uh, ERA under two. Wins the MVP. Wins the Cy Young. Uh, does all that. Also, he's a six time All Star. Um, and just to look at his some of his prime years with the Athletics from 71 to 77, 289 ERA, uh, t- almost 1,300 strikeouts. This is over seven seasons. Uh, a FIP of just above three. Um, he averaged 15 complete games per year. This just never happens again. This probably will never, ever happen again. Um, just over 265 innings pitched uh, and almost 200 Ks per year. So, Vida Blue, rest in peace to a legend. That's my one thing to know today. Rest in peace to Vida Blue. Again, pitching matchup, or excuse me, the uh, story storyline to watch the Rays this week, of course. Pitching matchup, uh, Verlander and Green. And then Vida Blue, one thing to know, rest in peace. So uh, let me know what you guys thought of that. Let me know what you thought of that little, little uh, you know, little thing for you guys to start off the week. Um, some some things for you to, to watch later this week and uh, this weekend. Uh, something to start you off with, with you know, with the the passing of Vita Blue. So, give me your thoughts. Let me know in the comments. Uh, let me know on social media, Twitter, Instagram. Follow the shift on Instagram. Follow us on TikTok as well. That'll all be below and in the description. So that's gonna do it for me today. And I'll talk to you guys soon when me and Nick Earnshaw will give you our next episode of the podcast.